at industrial facilities routinely use overhead and gantry cranes to lift loads weighing many tons. When operated properly, these cranes can make handling heavy or oversized loads easier and safer. However, because their use is so common, workers often forget their hazards. You can control these hazards by knowing the safety features of overhead and gantry cranes and following the required best practices for crane operation. Never operate an overhead or gantry crane unless you've been properly trained and are authorized by your employer to do so. The majority of overhead crane incidents are caused by human error. Employees with a supporting role in crane operations at your facility, such as riggers and maintenance personnel, must also be properly trained, qualified, and authorized by your employer. Employees who operate cranes should also be familiar with and follow the recommendations and requirements in the manufacturer's operator's manual. Overhead and gantry cranes are the two most common types of industrial cranes. Although overhead and gantry cranes have many similarities, there are also significant differences between them. Select each image to learn more. An overhead crane has a movable bridge that travels on an overhead runway structure that is typically fixed to a building ceiling. This traveling bridge carries the hoisting mechanism that lifts the load. An overhead crane can move loads in all three axes or planes, forward and backward, side to side, and up and down. A gantry crane is similar to an overhead crane, but it is built upon a bridge-like overhead structure with two or more legs that rest on the ground. The crane's trolley moves along its bridge girders to move a load, and the entire gantry crane can be moved on fixed rails or a similar runway. Safety standards and operating procedures for overhead and gantry cranes are grouped together because they have similar traveling and hoisting characteristics. Other types of cranes that have the same fundamental characteristics are jibs or boom cranes that are either wall-mounted or floor-mounted to a pillar. Overhead and gantry cranes come in many shapes and sizes and can lift load capacities that vary from a few pounds to many tons. Select each image to learn more about common design elements of these cranes and variations in specific features. After reviewing the content, select X to return to and learn about the remaining images. Cranes are typically powered by one of two sources, electricity, compressed air, a hydraulic system, or an internal combustion engine. The means of operation vary from crane to crane. Some cranes are pulpit operated, which means that they are controlled from a fixed operator station that's not attached to the crane. Other cranes have a cab that's attached to the crane. Depending on the design, the cab may be fixed or it may travel with the bridge, providing the operator a more consistent view of the load. In another crane design, the operator controls the load from the floor, where they can move about on foot, using a wired pendant control suspended beneath the crane, or a wireless radio control that has a transmitter and receiver. Overhead and gantry cranes must meet specific design requirements. These requirements cover crane components, such as the cab and its controls, ladders and stairways, bridge and trolley bumpers, brakes, electrical components, hoisting equipment, and warning devices. Never make modifications to this equipment without the approval of a registered engineer or the crane's manufacturer. 
extinguisher and an overload limiting device. Here is a practice exercise to test your knowledge. Read each statement at the left and determine whether it is true or false. When you are finished, select Check My Answer to see how you did. Required two types of inspection. A periodic inspection occurs monthly to yearly, depending on how often the crane is used. A designated person performs this in depth inspection. The second type, called a frequent inspection, occurs on any day that the crane will be used and must take place prior to the first use that day. The person operating the crane typically performs these inspections. There are two parts to a frequent inspection. The visual inspection and the pre-operation test, which is a functional test that takes place prior to attaching a load to the crane. Since cranes vary in design, the parts requiring inspection vary as well. For example, if you're inspecting a crane that has an elevated cab or pulpit, means of access such as ladders, stairways, and raised walkways need to be checked for damage or missing parts. However, if you will be operating the crane while standing on the ground, you will need to check the pendant control or ratio control. Refer to your facility's procedures or the manufacturer's guidelines for the appropriate inspection frequency and required inspection items. Do you know which equipment should be checked as part of the daily visual inspection of a pendant controlled overhead crane? Select each item to learn more. Check that the wire rope is spooled properly on the drum. Ropes that are loose or poorly seated can become damaged. Check the block assembly's components for damage or cracks. Make sure that the sheath guards, the outside panels that cover the block's pinch point, are intact and unbroken. The sheath or pulley and the wire rope should not make any contact with the sheath guard. Inspect the hook for damage, such as bending, stretching, or cracking. Verify that the safety latch closes properly. If it doesn't, this may be a sign that the hook has become stretched. A stretched hook is hazardous to use, even if the latch is replaced. Check that the buttons on the pendant control are clearly marked. Inspect the wiring to confirm it is properly connected and not frayed or otherwise damaged. Check that the buttons on the... The person responsible for rigging generally inspects slings and other below-the-hook components, such as spreader bars, shackles, and pulleys. Never attempt a lift until these components have been checked for signs of excessive wear, distortion, crack, or other damage. Remember, a lift is only as safe as its weakest component. The person, resp the person responsible for rigging. After you've completed your visual inspection of the equipment, you're ready to begin the pre-operation check with no load attached. Begin with the operating control. Each function must be tested, no matter how frequently or infrequently it is used. Operate the crane of in these directions. Listen and look for any sound or movement that could indicate damage. This includes bridge travel, forward and backward, and trolley travel, side to side. Make sure that its travel alarms, audible or visual, are functioning properly as you test travel the bridge and trolley. Test the hoist by slowly raising and lowering the load block. Check the brakes in all travel and hoist. They are operating properly. 
district. There's a way out. Get the shouts at them there. Not anymore. I'm just glad we're not under them. <laughs> Select each image to learn about the steps to take to prepare for a safe lift. After reviewing the content, select the X to return to and learn about the remaining images. First, verify that the surface that the load will be set on has sufficient strength and capacity for the weight and size of the load. You don't want to discover when the lift is underway that you have nowhere to place the load. Proper rigging is critical to a safe lift. Only perform this task if you're qualified and authorized by your employer to do so. To help ensure a safe lift, the rigger must determine the weight of the load, select appropriate slings and lifting hardware, ensure all lifting components are rated with an adequate capacity for the load, inspect the rigging equipment prior to the lift, Choose a hitch attachment method that will hold the load securely. Calculate the effect of sling angle on lifting capacity and figure out the load's center of gravity. Many industrial environments where overhead and gantry cranes are used have obstacles that could limit the crane operator's field of vision and pose a contact hazard with the load. A properly positioned spotter can assist you in safely moving the load. When you use a spotter, determine how you will communicate prior to the lift. This could be via voice, phones, radios, or standard hand signals. When you use hand signals, every member of the lifting crew should know their meaning. Notify co-workers who aren't involved in the lift that the crane will be in use so that they know to avoid the area as the load is being transported. Because the load moves overhead, anyone unaware of the lift could easily walk beneath the load without realizing they're putting themselves at risk. Prior to lifting a load, inspect the travel path to be sure it is clear of obstacles and people. Don't assume that the pathway is clear without checking. In a busy work environment, new hazards you're not aware of could enter the work area. To help ensure that people who aren't involved in the lift stay at a safe distance, limit access to the travel path. This can be done by cordoning off the area with barricades, cones, or tape, or by having a crew member keep people back as the load is being transported. Before a lift takes place, check for loose items, such as screws or tools, which may have been left behind while the load was being secured. These can become hazardous projectiles during a lift, which is one reason why hard hats are required during many lifting operations. If items that may shift or fall off during movement are part of the load to be moved, make sure that they're properly secured. Although overhead and gantry cranes vary in design, you can protect yourself and others by following these best work practices that apply to any crane that you might use. Select each topic to learn more. Where necessary, attach a tagline to the load. A tagline allows a member of the lift crew to control load swing while staying a safe distance from the raised load. Before raising a load high off the ground, raise it a few inches to check that it's balanced and free from swing or slipping. If the rigging needs to be adjusted, first lower the load back onto the ground. Remember, overhead cranes are designed only for vertical lifts. If the load is pulled sideways, serious damage or catastrophic crane failure could result. To ensure the load is lifted straight off the ground, Position the crane directly over the load so that the hoisting rope is vertical prior to lifting. Quick, jerky moves add stress to the lifting components and can cause the load to swing. To avoid these risks, start the lift slowly and throughout the lift, operate the controls smoothly and without abrupt changes in speed or direction. Before traveling in a lateral direction, Lift the load high enough to clear any obstructions. If the load is too low, it becomes a hazard that could contact other objects, 
causing either the load to fall or damage to the object the load struck. As you move the load, pay attention to what you're doing. Most crane accidents occur during routine operations, so don't allow yourself to become careless or distracted. Avoid multitasking. If you need to speak to someone or answer a call, stop operating the crane first. Never carry a load over people, and do not allow anyone to ride on a load or crane hook. Do not leave a suspended load unattended. As the operator, the load is your responsibility. If you must step away during a lifting operation, lower the load to the ground first. Here is a practice exercise to test your knowledge. Select and drag the statements at the left that describe safe work practices when preparing for or performing a lift to the picture at the right. Follow these steps to properly set down a load. Select each step to learn more. Position the crane over the set down point and slowly lower the load. If the load is free swinging and needs to be turned for proper placement, attach tag lines to at least two corners of the load and use them to adjust its position while maintaining a safe distance. Stop the crane when the load block is low enough to unhook the sling. During the entire operation, be sure to keep your hands away from pinch points. After completing a lift, take these steps to protect employees in the area and to ensure that the equipment remains in good condition for the next lift. Select each button to learn. After setting it on the ground, detach the load from the crane. Make sure all slings and accessories are removed from the hook so that they're not left hanging where they could snag on passing equipment. Raise the crane hook above head level so that no one can run into it. If it has a designated storage area, move the crane to that location. Put all controllers in the off position before closing the main switch. Where applicable, make sure that slings are returned to their designated storage racks and that hardware is properly stored. Do not leave slings or other lifting equipment lying on the floor. Do you know how to prevent an unbalanced load during a lift? Read the following scenario and then select continue. How could Patrick have prevented this accident from occurring? Select the correct answer, then... How's your independent control working? It's great. The cleanup definitely put us behind, though. But it gave us a chance to improve our layout, so we should be able to catch up. Any other issues with the crane? Nope, I made sure of that before I lifted the first boat this morning. Keep up the good work. Thanks.